Is a tiny home the same thing as an accessory dwelling unit? Legally, the answer is maybe. In some California cities, a tiny home on wheels is considered a type of ADU. But when it comes to regulations and return on investment, ADUs and tiny homes are in totally different categories. As popular as tiny homes have become in the last decade, especially those gorgeous, trendy ones I'm sure you've seen pop up on Pinterest or Instagram, the benefits that come with an ADU really put tiny homes in the back seat. In this video, I'm gonna to touch on the main differences between tiny homes and ADUs, the return on investment for each, and the regulatory differences. At Maxible, we've helped thousands of homeowners plan, hire, and manage their ADU project from start to finish. Without further ado, let's dive into the major differences between tiny homes and ADUs. First, their size. Tiny homes are, well, tiny. The minimum allowed size is 150 square feet, and the maximum is usually around 400. For perspective, 400 square feet is about the size of a standard garage. With clever ADU design, this size can make for a cozy and functional space. While you can go as small as 150 square feet, we don't recommend going any smaller than 300 square feet if your tiny home is gonna be used for long-term housing. ADUs, on the other hand, can be much larger. What can you do with 1,200 square feet? I think it's more appropriate to ask, what can't you do with 1,200 square feet? You can actually fit up to three bedrooms in a 1,200 square foot ADU, but we've seen people get pretty creative with the space, like adding a deck, a pottery studio, or even a gym. We've even seen a beautiful four bedroom unit. For an in-depth breakdown on all the ADU sizes, check out our YouTube video on ADU sizes. But the limited size of a tiny home is not really the biggest problem. It's the ROI and the regulations. You can't talk about ROI without talking about the investment. So let's get into the spicy stuff, the costs. The average tiny home in California will cost anywhere between $40,000 to $100,000. Okay, not a bad price when you compare that to an ADU, which usually starts at closer to $120,000 and goes up from there. But remember, a tiny home must be on wheels, which means that unlike an ADU, it's not physically attached to your property. Because of this, a tiny home can't be sold as part of your real estate property if you ever decide to sell. Plus, much like a car depreciates in value, so does your tiny home over time. An ADU, on the other hand, is sold as part of your property since it's built directly onto your site, foundation and all. In fact, ADUs are a hot commodity, especially for some home buyers with college aid kids or elderly parents that will need their own private home. A study released by Porch in 2021 showed that having an ADU on your property increases the value of your home by an average of 35% over properties without an ADU. Not too bad. For that reason, the potential return on investment for an ADU far outweighs that of a tiny home. Okay, so let's talk about the regulations. A lot of cities and counties in California are scrambling to pass tiny home regulations to drum up more housing in the midst of this housing crisis, which sounds great in theory, but this has just led to a lot of loose ends, sloppily written regulations, and a heck of a lot of confusion. For example, in some counties, tiny homes are intended for caregivers and can only go in the backyard of a person who's sick. Wait, what? Each city has its own list of tiny home rules regarding access, setbacks, construction, materials, and a lot of other things. So right now it's kind of a mess. The main requirement that we've been seeing so far is that the tiny home must be on wheels, which means your yard where you intend to place the ADU must be accessible by a driveway or an alley. It must also be registered and licensed with the DMV. In fact, tiny homes fall under the same regulatory body as RVs and trailers. Most of the other regulations having to do with things such as design elements, mechanical equipment, and utilities are going to vary by city. But there is hope. ADUs were in the same boat not too many years ago, but thanks to homeowners voicing the concern and standing their ground, a lot has changed for the better. In fact, we've helped influence a lot of the new bills that have gone into effect to make building ADUs much easier than they were before. Now ADU regulations are standardized across California. Cities are strictly limited in the changes that they can make to those laws. We hope the same is true someday for tiny homes. Are tiny homes housing? Tiny homes are required to have double-paned windows, insulation, electricity, water, and sewage hookups. So yes, technically they are habitable spaces, 
but it all comes down to personal preference. Some people are okay with limited space, but the general consensus is that most people would prefer to have a bit of extra space for their hobbies or even having guests over. Even so, a lot of the people that initially say they're okay with a smaller space will find fairly soon that a larger and more permanent space is necessary, whether it's for a growing family or to build a work from home space. Remember also that tiny homes aren't permanent housing. They're meant to be wheeled around as time goes by and they'll lose value. Now let's get back to ADUs. ADUs have been recognized by the government as a crucial part of the long-term solution to our housing crisis. ADUs are realistic long-term housing solutions for most people. So at the end of the day, ADUs have that permanence, the comfort, the functionality of a regular single family home, but for a fraction of the cost in California. Whether you're looking to build a 150 square foot ADU or a 1200 square foot ADU, or you're looking for passive rental income or a place to house family members, an ADU can be a absolutely life-changing event. We'd love to help you on this process. We can give you education and resources and then help you hire your designer and source those general contracting bids. If you're interested in getting help on your project, go ahead and click the link below. And as always, please like and subscribe.